What is up, watch friends? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. Today is Sunday, and I am wearing my Rolex 124060, no date, sub. And it takes a lot to get up to a watch like this, and, and I'm not saying that in a way to be derogatory or, or condescending. Um, but today's episode is about the evolution of a watch collector and what it takes to get to, you know, well, let's just roll the intro and, and we'll talk about it. You're watching Time Pieces with Tony. Talking Time Pieces with Tony. You're watching Talking Time Pieces with Tony. Yeah. All right, so in, in today's episode, it's kind of one of those things that if you grew up, not a lot of people grew up like me, but um, in a situation to where you didn't have any money and you started off with really inexpensive watches and you gradually worked your way up um, and, and how it all really starts. Um, I, I wouldn't say I feel sorry for people who, you know, their first watch is a Rolex or a Patek, but you see these, some of these videos where it's like, yeah, I'm looking to get my first watch and they go out and they, they get a Patek or a Rolex and it's like, you just missed the whole purpose and point of really the ride. It's it's not, you know, the Patek Philippe and the Rolex is pretty much a destination. But a lot of times to get to that destination, it's the journey to get to that destination, which makes it so much more worthwhile, right? Um, you know, to, to get to the point where you have a Submariner or a Patek Philippe or whatever watch it is, Omega, Cartier, whatever. Um, and for me, it's been one of those journeys where I started really young and I gradually went up and then crashed and started again, then sort of mid-leveled out. And then it took a while before I started going up again. And that's a lot to do with finances and the way I, the way I grew up. I mean, I just, I just had such a non-standard way of, of life growing up, you know what I mean? So for me, it was like, I loved watches at a really young age. You know, um, even my little sister would say to me that, oh, remember when dad got us uh, the Mickey Mouse watches and, the, and all that? And I don't really remember that because it was so long ago. But, you know, I remember I just, I'm going to jump to my teens. And that's, you know, like when I was getting Swatch watches. Um, and then, you know, there was a period of time where, um, you know, you would go to the mall and, you know, you would look at a, you know, like watch brands like at that, in those days, like Movado were considered luxury watches. Tag Heuer's were real luxury watches. Um, and, you know, I couldn't afford those. And so I would look at the, more of the fashion brands like Fossil, you know, Guess, DKNY, you know, these watches that looked cool, but they were just kind of throwaway watches, but they were kind of cool. They looked good. And I always wanted to, even when I didn't have any money and, you know, coming up in the music business or doing what I was doing um, and didn't have much, I always tried to look nice, you know, so I always tried to get a nice watch. And I remember, you know, getting my, my Fossil watch that was 75 bucks and I was just like, man, you know, but keep in mind, this is a long time ago. So compared to today's money, it's, I mean, still 75 bucks, but um, so it would be that thing I'd go and then I'd buy a guest watch and I remember paying I think 90 bucks for the guest watch or whatever and it was just like yeah you know and you wear that and then you know you spend you start getting over the hundred dollar mark you know and then you know maybe two hundred dollar mark and then I remember when I got my first Movado uh, museum you know it was like I had to trade before I got Movado there was a brand called ESQ which was Movado's sort of lower brand kind of like Tudor to Rolex, um, ESQ. And I was like, well, I got a Movado, but it's an ESQ. And then I remember when I got my first um, actual Movado museum watch and um, I had to trade my ESQ plus some cash to get the, the museum watch. And I just thought I'd made it, man. I was just like, yeah, I rocked that Movado like it was, you know, and that's probably why I still, I'm still fond of Movado museum watches. I still have one that I've had for about 20 years. I mean, it's, it hasn't been worn in, in forever, but uh, you know, and then you start getting into these other brands. I remember when I got my first Rolex and, and you know, I was in my twenties, but then it got stolen. Um, 
and then, you know, you start again. You know, uh, I, I was one of those guys that like, if I had money, I, I'd be the guy that goes out and buys a Porsche with every last penny I had, you know, just so I could have the car, you know, not enough money to put gas in it or get it fixed if something were to happen with it, but damn it, I'm gonna have a Porsche, you know? That's how, that's how I rolled back then. Um, and so, you know, I had that Rolex for a minute and I'm gonna discredit that or discount it because it didn't really count because after that, I went straight back to lower end brands, you know? And then I, I remember getting a Tag Heuer Link, if you remember those from the 90s, early 90s. Um, those were super popular. You know, and you just, it was, it was a fun, fun time, you know, to, to do that in the watch thing. I certainly really couldn't afford the Rolex or the Cartier, which I really wanted, um, although I had one. But, you know, then you, you start getting into like, uh, like a $500 watch and you're like, oh man, I can't, I don't know if I can, should spend 500 bucks on a watch. And then, then you do it. Now you've, you've, you've sort of broke that barrier of $500, right? Um, and then you get into that whole, as your collecting journey goes, you're maybe sell some of your watches for, you know, nothing. There was no, it wasn't like it is today. Um, and you just buy more watches and then you sell some watches and you're still sort of around that $500 mark and, you know, you get up to $700 and you're like, wow, man, my next one's, a, I'm going to get a watch that's a thousand dollars, you know? And I remember, uh, I think it was a, an Oris that I spent a thousand bucks on and it was like, holy shit, man, I just spent a thousand bucks on a fucking Oris, man. Or, you know, a lot, you know, wh whatever it is, it's a thousand dollars, you know? And you certainly really aren't thinking about spending 10 or 12 or 15,000, $20,000 on, on a Rolex or whatever other watch that cost that much money because, you know, money came and went. It was like feast or famine, man. When you get a, a decent check, and that was just gone. You know what I mean? I was lucky about you know, musical equipment because I was getting, I have endorsements, so I didn't have to go out and buy guitars that, that cost you know, a few thousand bucks because I was, I was getting them for free. So I was just putting my money, just buying watches and collecting. And then, you know, as, as time goes by, you know, I started getting higher end watches and I was in the watch business as well. I was in the music industry and then I loved watches so much I got into the watch business. I even had my own brand. Um, and then, you know, I lost everything and I, I had nothing left. So, you know, watches, that was it, done, you know? So started again with like a, a Movado, you know? And I wasn't thinking about luxury brands anymore. I was just like, you know what, man, I just got to focus on making money and I'm not even gonna think about watches. So I wore a Movado for many, many years. And then started making some more money and buying some more watches and then then boom, again, freaking lose everything, got nothing, you know? And it's like, I'm done with watches. That's it. I don't know, but that watch bug, man, it comes back to bite you hard, doesn't it, you know? For any of you guys who, who know, I mean, you've probably had similar journeys in it, maybe in a different way, but, you know, and then, you know, once you, once I got, you know, started saying, okay, I, I, can, I can buy some watches now again. And I, I remember when I, uh, you know, again, spent over a thousand dollars on a watch or then $2,000. I'm like, oh, hell no. And then in 2017, I bought a, a used Datejust from Generales and Generales in Toluca Lake for 30, 3,500 bucks, I think. And I was just so stoked. I got a, oh man, I'm going to keep this watch forever. Well, no, man, I ended up selling it about it less than a year later. And I remember just randomly going to Bindi Jewelers in the Glendale Gallery. This is when you can still buy watches, Rolex and whatever. And I bought my first brand new Datejust 36, fluted, be uh, fluted bezel, Roman numerals, white dial, and Jubilee bracelet with the hidden clasp. And I was so stoked, right, you know? And then from there, it, you know, it, I eventually got rid of that. And I was just wearing, you know, a few hundred dollar watches, watches, and you know, then I bought a Cartier tank, you know, and now, you know, now you're spending, you're, you're spending so much money now at this point, you, you would know, next thing you know, you're, you, you're spending $10,000 on a sub. And it's like remembering when 
spending a hundred dollars on a watch was like almost unthinkable. It was like, whoa, I just, just busted a hundred bucks and then $500 and you're like, oh fuck, dude. And then you're, you're, you're proud, you know, once you get to your thousand dollar watch, yeah, I spent a thousand bucks on this, that, you know what I mean? And, you know, and it just goes on and that's the addiction with this or illness or whatever you want to call it with collecting watches. And it's such a beautiful thing, man, that, that uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to have the watches that I have and I don't take it for granted. Um, I love the fact that I was able to do that. And, you know, and if everything ends again, you know, I'm no stranger to that, then so be it, you know, cause I'd be just as happy wearing a cheap watch than, than I am really with the expensive ones. I don't really care. I mean, I do care, I love having them, but you know what I mean? I don't need to wear, you know, someone commented and said that, you know, well, you, it's nice having a Rolex, you can't wear it outside. And it's like, well, actually I do. I wore it today when I was out doing grocery shopping and running errands, well, I'll say running errands, I'm not, I got a broken back, but, um, but at the same time, when I was out doing the things I had to do today, I wore it, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I can enjoy it just as much sitting at home and I don't have to wear it out and I don't have to show it off. I've been primarily wearing my new Swatch um, everywhere. It doesn't matter to me, uh, you know, it's a watch. As long as you're wearing a watch. One of my neighbors bought a new Seiko and he doesn't wear watches at all. Not the one that I that, that has all the nice watches, but my other neighbor. I was stoked that he just is wearing a watch. That's it, it's all that matters. It's the joy of watches and it's the fun. It's the journey of collecting and being an enthusiast. It's not the end, it's not the destination. And if that journey has to start again, at least you know you have a little bit more education and the next next time it happens or the next time, you know? Anyway, I just wanted to share that and uh, I think that whatever you wear, it's not what you have, it's how you wear it. And that's, that's the coolest thing. It doesn't matter if you have a Seiko, a Rolex, a Patek or whatever, you know? If you're a cool person and you're wearing a, a freaking fossil, hey man, because no one else cares, you know what I mean? No one else gives a shit what you wear, you know? No one's gonna like you because you have a Rolex any better than if you had a fossil, right? So having said that, uh, appreciate everyone who likes and subscribes. Thank you for all the well wishes. I'm um, hoping to get back surgery or whatever it takes. Uh, I'll know more next week anyway. So, all right, take care guys.